Today we're going to cover lesson 2-1, integers and absolute value. By the end of this lesson you're going to be able to read and write integers and you're also going to be able to find the absolute value of a number. Our vocabulary for this lesson is integer, negative integer, positive integer, graph, and absolute value. The first thing that we need to cover in this lesson is exactly what is an integer. Well here you see I have a number line. It goes from negative 10 down here all the way to positive 10 over here. An integer is a number that can be both positive and it can be negative, but it doesn't include fractions or decimals. So the numbers that we see here on this number line, these are all integers. These numbers from 1 to 10 these are known as positive integers. And these numbers over here from negative 1 to negative 10, these are known as negative integers. The number 0 right here in the middle it isn't positive or negative. It's kind of neutral here in the middle. One thing I like to remind students about integers is positive integers, we can just say the number 5 or the number 6. We don't have to say that both the word positive and then its number. So we don't have to say positive 5. Kind of think of that as its first and its last name, positive 5. So when we talk about positive integers, we can just say the number value itself. But when we talk about negative integers, we have to say both its first and its last name. We need to call it negative 7 or negative 4. We can't just call it 4 because we'd be confusing it with is it positive or is it negative. So negative integers, we always say the negative value in front of them. Positive integers, we can just leave off the word positive and just say the integer itself. So let's do a few examples. For these situations, we're going to write an integer for each situation. So here's our first one. It says an average temperature of 5 degrees below normal. There's a couple important words here for us. 5 and below. Whenever we have something below, that means that it's less than 0. So that means that we need the negative sign in front of it. So when we talk about temperatures below normal, we say we, we need the negative sign. So this would be an example of negative 5. Here's our next example that we're going to do. And this one is an average rainfall of 5 inches above normal. So here's one of our important words, 5. And here's another one, above. So this means we're above something. So that means this is a positive situation. So that in this example, the answer would just be 5, or you could put the plus sign in front and say positive 5. So we, here we've taken um, words and we've translated them into numbers. The next example that we're going to do is we're going to graph this set of integers, and we're going to graph them on a number line. When you make number lines, you don't always have to make nice fancy ones like I had earlier. Here, I have a line and I have an arrow on either end because it's showing that you that the example, this number line continues in both of, um, the positive and the negative direction. I'm going to put a zero here in the middle. Now I've graphed zero. I'm going to put a dot there to represent graphing zero. Now I'm going to graph four. So I'm going to put it about here. Notice I haven't gotten out a ruler. I haven't made sure this thing is perfectly measured out. This is just a, a, a rough sketch of graphing these integers. So that, and I'm going to label this 4 here. And I'm going to put a dot here. Now if I've made the distance between 0 and 4 this far, that means if I want to graph negative 6, I need to make the distance a little bit bigger because negative 6 is a little farther away from 0 than 4 is. So I'm going to draw my line there, I'm going to put my dot, and I'm going to put negative 6. 
And now I've graphed though that set of integers. I graphed the zero, the four, and the negative six. If I had a number line, I could, I could certainly put them on there. But if you don't have a number line, you just need to draw something out that probably looks like this. The next thing that we're going to talk about is absolute value. Absolute value is the distance that a number is away from zero. So if I wanted to know the way we write absolute value is these two bars like this. Those upright bars are known as the absolute value bars. And so if I'm doing negative five, it's right here on the number line, right? And here is zero all the way up here. So the absolute value is how far away is negative five from zero. If negative five were to walk from here at negative five all the way to zero, how far would it walk? It would go one, two, three, four, five steps. So that means the absolute value of negative five is five. Let's do the absolute value of three. That means it's right here on the number line. And remember, absolute value is how far is three from zero? How far would three have to walk from here at three to zero here? We'll go one, two, three steps. So that means the absolute value of three is three. So the question that you need to ask yourself when you find the absolute value is how far is that number from zero. That's what you're going to ask yourself right there when you want to find the absolute value of something. So let's give this a try. We're going to evaluate these. So we're going to find the absolute value of negative four. The absolute value of negative four, that means how far is negative four from zero on a number line? Well, if I were to walk from negative four to zero, that would be four. So the answer to the absolute value of negative four is four. We've evaluated that example. Here's another one. It's the absolute value of eight. Let's see, eight is eight spaces away from zero. So that's pretty easy. Let's try some, some that are a little more complicated. Here we actually have an expression. When we do these, when we're actually going to be evaluating an expression with more than one term in it, we want to go through and find the absolute value of the numbers first and then go back and do the math itself. So if I want to know the absolute value of this, I'm going to start by finding the absolute value of negative 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5 because it's 5 numbers away from 0. I'm going to bring down this minus sign. And now I'm going to find the absolute value of 2. The absolute value of 2 is 2. And now I'm going to do the math. 5 minus 2 is 3. A lot of students want to, want to skip this step right here. They want to skip the actual writing down of the 5 minus 2. They think that they'll be able to remember that and then get the answer. It's a good idea to write this down so you don't forget it and you don't make a mistake. Let's try this one over here. We don't have to find the absolute value of this 2 because it doesn't have the bars around it, but we have to find the absolute value of negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3, and then I'm going to bring everything else down that we didn't do anything with. And now I'm going to do the math. 2 plus 3 is 5. And there we have our answer. So remember, the important things from this lesson are when you find the absolute value of a number, you're going to ask yourself this question right here, how far is that number from 0? And when we're evaluating expressions that have absolute value in them, we want to find their absolute value first and then do out any of the arithmetic that's needed. Um, an integer is any number that's either negative or positive that doesn't include fractions or decimals. These numbers over here from 1 and up, those are known as positive integers. Any number from negative 1 and in this direction is known as a negative integer, and zero in the middle is, either, is neither positive nor negative. When you need to translate sentences from um, words into math, 
Some of the things that you need to look for are the keywords, the number itself, and then some sort of hint for us. Is it that below? Is that above? To give us a clue as to if that's going to be a positive example or a negative example.